Hi, I am Ashish Mathur. Welcome to a short video wherein I'd like to show you the practical usage of Microsoft Excel's cube functions. So in this short video, I'd like to show you how you can display filtered criteria on a graph. For other MS Excel solutions, you may visit my website ashishmathur.com. So here's a simple data set of five columns wherein I have the date of sale here, the product sold over here, region, area, and the amount. And from this five column table, I create a simple pivot table. In the row labels, I dragged in date, which I grouped in two months. In the column labels, I have the various products sold with the revenue shown between over here. And I've, I have two slicers for this pivot table, one for region, another one for area. Now from this pivot table, I further went and created a simple pivot chart, or rather a stack column chart, one um, each each column for one, uh, each column representing one month, and within each column there are stacks for different products. Now on this pivot chart, one does not get to see what selection one has made in the slicers available on this pivot table sheet over here. In other words, if I were to let's say slice this pivot table by Bangalore, Pune, and Kolkata here. I do not see these selections on the pivot chart over here. Even, even if I go to the various options available in the pivot chart tools button at the very top over there, I do not see any option over here which can actually show me the slicer selections on this chart over here. And I may simply I may simply need that so that if I take a print of this pivot chart and show it to somebody, he must get to know what this what the base data has been sliced by. So under design and under format, I do not see any such option. The only way I can actually think of displaying the filtered criteria on the pivot chart would be to write a simple statement over here saying this chart has been sliced by the following criteria. Bangalore, Pune, and Kolkata. I can then assign a name to this, say TRY for try. And on the pivot chart over here, I can head on to insert text, text box. I create a simple text box over here. I take my cursor to the formula bar. And here I can type in equal to TRY try, which displays that simple statement which I wrote a while back on the pivot chart over here. Now the problem over here is that if I were to head back to my pivot table and change the slicer settings, let's say to only show Delhi there, then I do not actually get to see the text box here automatically update. So what I have to actually do is establish a link somewhere, somehow between the slicer selection made over here and the sentence constructed over here. Since the sentence over here is linked to the text box over here, the moment this sentence over here changes, the text box entry over here will change automatically. Now we're going to accomplish all this by using a combination of power pivot and the cube formulas of Excel. So here's what I'm going to do. I select this entire data set here. I go to power pivot and say add to data model there. I get the data uh, in the power pivot window. And since a pivot table created via the power pivot window does not have the functionality to group my dates by months, I will have to write a formula in a calculate column over here which says um, that I would like to actually format my date of sale in uh, as, as, a, as the month. So that's January, February, so on and so forth. But before that, I just have to give a meaningful name over here. So let's call this base data. And, okay. and now let me use the format function over here to say that I'd like to format the date of sale column of my base data sheet as MMMM. And once I have the months over here, I right click on the column heading to rename the column as months over there. And now I create a pivot table from the pivot table button available in the power pivot window, pivot table new worksheet and let's over here drag months to the row labels product to the column labels and amount over here to the value area section and um, right click pivot table options uncheck the auto fit column width box let's do some basic formatting um, and now let's try to insert slicers here 
for region and for area. So I head on here, I insert a slicer for region as well as area. Let's just position them so that it's easy to make a selection. Let's place area right beside it with something like this and just format the area for differentiation in a different color altogether. Now my next step is to actually create a pivot chart out of this. So on the pivot table tools analyze I head on to pivot chart. And let's create a stack column out of it, exactly what I'd done from my normal pivot chart. Uh, no, sorry, uh, the chart which I created from my normal uh, Excel table there. So I click on OK, right click. I just move this chart to a sheet of its own so that it's clearly visible. Now, the same problem emerges here as well. There is no provision over here to actually uh, show the slicer selection that I've made. So the problem persists with uh, charts that you create from a conventional pivot as well as the chart that you create from a power pivot window. Now here is where the cube formulas will actually help us. So I head on to the sheet that I've created the pivot, the, power, the, the pivot table from the power pivot window and here I use a function, uh, a cube function which is called the cube set. Connection is going to be this workbook data model comma set expression is the name of the slicer over here which is region now let's say i'm not sure about what the name should be so to see the name of this uh, of the slicer region i can right click here i go to slicer settings and the name assigned to it is slicer underscore region one so let me retry i do a cube set this workbook model comma slicer underscore region one comma a caption to it which is let's say selected regions enter okay now this is basically a container which will hold all the selections which I make in the region slicer here to extract from this container the specific components we'll have to write a function called the cube rank member connection will be this workbook model itself Comma, the set expression would be cell I1. I put a dollar before the one so that I can drag it down. Comma, the rank. Now the rank will be row minus one. The reason for doing a row minus one actually is that I'm since I'm writing the formula in cell I I2 for now, the row number, the, the row function will return number two as the answer, two minus one, one. So I want to return the first selection from the slicer. When I enter this, I get to see all because I haven't made any selections yet. If I would choose Delhi over there, it shows me only Delhi. If I clear the filter, it shows me all. Now let's drag this down. I see an NA over there because since I haven't made any selection so far, there is no there is no second selection that is there in my slicer. And therefore to suppress these errors, I can write an if error function and now drag this down all the way till the 10th row. And I apply similar logic for the area as well. So the only change I'll have to make over here will be, let's say it's called the selected area. And under this, I choose area one. I can copy this formula, paste it over here. And this also shows me all because I haven't made any selection in the area over here. If I were to choose, if I were to choose this, it shows me two. If I were to hold down the shift key and choose this, it will still show me number two because I haven't dragged the formula down so far. So I drag it all the way down over here. I choose one, press and hold the shift key, press seven. And once I release my finger from the shift key, it shows me these are the selections which I made in the selected area. So I clear that. Okay, now what I have to do is let's start with the case wherein I choose Bangalore here and Kolkata here and Pune over here. And here I choose area 5 11 and 14 okay now we have to somehow think of a way to concatenate all the selected regions in a single cell so here i'll write a formula which will say uh, 
concat a nated regions which will be Bangalore to start with and here it will be Bangalore and if this cell is not equal to one null which means if, it's, if it holds a certain value then I'd like to concatenate this I'd like to concatenate like this so if i3 is not a null then sorry then I'd like to concatenate this k2 with this and this over here Bangalore and Kolkata I drag it further down to show me Bangalore Kolkata Pune and when I drag it down all the way till the 10th row over there you, I'll be getting a few falses over there so let's see what the mistake is I seem to have missed out on something so if it's a blank then do this else I want a blank there so I drag this all the way down and this shows me the concatenated regions and I apply similar logic for my concatenated areas as well so here in the logic would pretty much remain the same let's see what just happens if I drag this to the right hand side so now what I have with me is if I look at the entry in the 10th row for both these columns that is the selection which I actually have to ultimately display on the pivot chart so I'm going to call this final selections over here and simply link it to the cell like this right so this is what I have to ultimately show on the pivot chart now I go to my pivot chart that I've created and maybe before that just one small thing let's let's clear the area from here and um, so this shows me all Bangalore, Kolkata, Pune. I assign a name to this. So I'm going to call this C underscore regions. And this will be C underscore areas here. I head on to my pivot chart. And I go to insert text, text box there. And here I write a formula which says equal to C underscore regions. I create another text box by heading on to insert text text box over here. C underscore sorry in the formula bar there. So I take my cursor to the formula bar C underscore here. C underscore areas shows me all. Now let's just make a few modifications to this. Okay, so I head on to sheet three over here and simply write a statement over here saying. Um, selections made in the slicer are this region slicer are this and selections made in the area slicer are this now if I just go to my chart back there you'll see the text in the text boxes would stand updated and let's let's now like try to play with this so if I were to go to my pivot table over here and let's say select only Mumbai there so Mumbai region has been updated over here in the slicer automatically so slicer Selections made in the region slicer are Mumbai and selections made in the area slicer are all. If I were to within Mumbai choose only 2 and 12. So selections made in the area slicer are 12 and 2. Selections made in the region slicer are Mumbai. I can clear the slicer from here and I get back to where I started from. I choose Mumbai and Bangalore by holding down the control key. And it says selections made in the slicer are 
Bangalore, Mumbai. Selections made in the area are all over there. Okay, so the last leg of it that's left over here is to, um, let's say, I clear the slicers and let me just go add um, data labels for each one of these. Right? Okay. Now, having added the data labels, now let's see as to what happens when I were to choose Bangalore, Kolkata, and Pune. When I choose that, you'll see um, everything seems to work well. So do the data labels. They stay intact. And um, let's choose Delhi over there. And the slicer stays intact as well. In fact, I'm trying to figure out if um, uh, the data labels do give a problem with anything or not. So uh, if I were to choose area 1 and area 8 over there, and so selections made in the slicer region are all selections made in the area slicer are 1 comma 8. So it seems to be working well. So using a combination of power pivot and the cube functions of Excel, namely the cube set and um, the cube member, we've been able to actually display the, slice, the slicer selections on a chart. I hope you enjoyed watching this video. Thank you very much.